Hey guys, welcome back. I have with me today my Sega Dreamcast. However, uh, a couple days ago I got this thing uh, modded with an HDMI mod installed onto it, and this thing is fantastic. I mean, it uh, it looks phenomenal. I'm really happy with uh, the HDMI mod for the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, it runs about 150 bucks. If you're good at soldering, it's a uh, you know pretty good option out there. Uh, if you're not that good at soldering, uh, you got to pay a monitor to do it. You know it might be a little out of your price range, but it's definitely worth it in my opinion. A um, little little while back, I did a video on the Acura. Uh, HDMI adapter for the Dreamcast, which basically takes the native VGA signal and converts it to HDMI. And in that video, I also talked about various alternatives. So I kind of want to go over that real quick before I review the HDMI mod here. Um, but yeah, the, the Acura adapter, uh, like I said, it takes the VGA signal and converts that to the HDMI signal. And it looks, r looks really good on the television, on modern TVs. Um, like I mentioned in that video, I had some problems capturing with that footage because it didn't recognize the signal, so I actually had to plug it through a frame meister to get my Elgato capture card to read it at the time. But yeah, I mean, it definitely looks uh, fantastic. Uh, there's also, um, you can use just like a straight up VGA cable with a cheap VGA to HDMI adapter. Uh, not too bad looking. I mean, it definitely looks pretty good for, uh, you know, modern standards there. Uh, also, uh, VGA, uh, the VGA plug I mentioned, this is probably the best way to play Dreamcast games is to have like an old uh, VGA monitor, you know, like an old CRT VGA monitor and plug it directly into that. And even today it looks just absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, there's modern uh, displays like LCD displays, flat screens, whatnot, that have the VGA input. You can just plug it directly into there. Uh, looks pretty good. Of course, it's not gonna look as good as the CRT, but it's still looks pretty good but unfortunately this is not really an option for most displays nowadays because that input has you know been phased out of majority of displays nowadays um, there's also just s video um, if you're playing on a standard definition crt you know s video is probably a real simple good way to play your sega dreamcast games um, you can also hook the S video up to the Retro King to play on modern displays. Uh, it's not really feasible. It's not really the best option. But I mean, if you already have a Retro King laying around, and you just want to play a game real quick. It, you know, if the Dreamcast isn't really your go-to console, then yeah, it doesn't work too bad. But as far as this guy right here, the DC HDMI mod, uh, this thing is really impressive, and I'm gonna go over it real quick here. So the first game I want to show off is probably the Dreamcast game with the best graphics, which would be Soul Calibur. I mean, this looks absolutely incredible. And I am outputting and capturing at 1080p. Uh, the capture or the HDMI mod, it outputs 1080p, 960p, and 480p. Uh, it doesn't do 720, and the reason why is because the VGA native resolution is 640 by 480. So it's either doubling that into a 960p resolution, and your TV has to support that resolution, otherwise it won't, won't show it. Um, or it displays it into a 1080p resolution, which it doesn't stretch the image, which is why you have that uh, bar on the top and the bottom there, just kind of like that little black area there. But it still looks uh, really good. And I'll, I'll kind of talk about, you know, the 960, 1080p a little bit later in the video here. So the next game I want to show off real quick here is San Francisco Rush 2049. Uh, yeah, this is a really fun racing game that I really enjoyed playing in the arcade back in the day. Uh, also fun in the Nintendo 64, but definitely the Dreamcast version is the one to play. And yeah, I mean, the graphics uh, in this with the uh, HDMI mod is, you know, really good, really impressive. 
And just a quick note I want to mention is I'm still using my old uh, Elgato capture card. Um, I'm capturing at 1080p, but it doesn't do 60 frames per second. But I can assure you this thing definitely does, uh, you know, definitely outputs 60 frames per second, which I'll show later in the video with my uh, camera footage. Next up we have Sturmwind, which is a kind of a cool uh, indie game, came out a few years ago on the Sega Dreamcast. One of those games that's not really uh, endorsed by Sega, but you know, pretty cool that the Dreamcast still has uh, games that are coming out today. This is just kind of a fun shooter, but yeah, I mean the graphics in this game look fantastic, and of course they look even better with the HDMI mod. And I think I played this game in one of my, uh, I think it was my Retro Tank video that I did. But yeah, this is a this is a really fun game, and yeah, it, it looks looks amazing. I mean, I'm really pleased with this mod. And of course, my favorite game on the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, I can't make a video without showing footage of a Mortal Kombat game. So here's Mortal Kombat Gold. I uh, love playing Mortal Kombat Gold on the Dreamcast. It's basically like the ultimate version of Mortal Kombat 4 with new characters and whatnot. Uh, did a video on this game a while back and compared it with the other uh, home console versions of Mortal Kombat 4. But yeah, I mean, this, uh, the graphics in this look really, really good. And um, I'll show you the options here that you can enable, but just kind of real quick. Here's some uh, scan line footage, which you can go to the menu, you can enable scan lines, and what's really cool about, you know, showing off scan lines on Mortal Kombat Gold is it kind of looks like the arcade version a little bit more. <laughs> but yeah, uh, scan lines on this look pretty good, and of course if scan lines are not your thing, just, you know, leave them off. Uh, the, the mod looks just amazing. I mean, I'm just really happy with how good this thing is. So real quick here, I want to show you how to get into the menu. You press a combination of various buttons here. Uh, on my mod, uh, you press the trigger buttons, X, A, and the start button. Uh, I don't know if it's set like that on default. I haven't really messed around with it, but that's, that's what it's set on mine. But you can go into the output resolution, which I kind of talked about earlier. Uh, you can set to 960p or 1080p. 960p will fill up the entire screen um, with, of course, the left and right. Uh, blackness but it'll get rid of that top and bottom uh, black bars uh, section uh, if your TV does not support 960p then you'll want to run it at 1080p and then of course in advanced uh, video settings you have the deinterlacer if you're not you know converting the native uh, VGA signal and it's you know just outputting and converting like a 40i or 240p signal um, you can enable the deinterlacer uh, scan lines we kind of already showed off you can turn on and off the scan lines here or the thickness uh, whether the scan lines are either odd or even and of course the video mode settings uh, this way you can either force the VGA or do kind of like the switch trick with the VGA signal for games that don't support the VGA output just kind of a quick note uh, when I first started playing this I wasn't too impressed with the graphical quality and it turns out I didn't have the VGA uh, enabled so if you have this mod make sure you enable the VGA output to get you know a really good signal so yeah I definitely recommend uh, getting this mod and getting having it installed if you're not a good uh, solder uh, but again it's gonna be a little pricey it's 150 bucks for the mod and however much it costs to have a modder install, probably like somewhere in the $100 range. Uh, if you're good at soldering, um, it's definitely, if, you, if, you, if you're good at soldering and you can do it yourself, it's definitely worth picking up because you look at the alternatives out there like the Acura and whatnot, you know, those run around 80 to 100 bucks. Uh, so for 150, you're getting a much, much better solution. But if you're not good at soldering, 250 range might not be ideal. Uh, again, uh, I still think the best way to play Dreamcast games is the VGA uh, output into an old CRT VGA monitor. Uh, however, you may 
not like playing it on like a little tiny monitor. You want to play it on like a living room TV. So in that case, this is definitely your best solution. Um, if it's still too steep for you, there's plenty of other simple options out there. Um, again, like just a uh, VGA to HDMI cheap adapter, uh, the Acura, uh, even just uh, S-Video and RetroTink if you already have a RetroTink. But other than that, the HDMI mod, can't can't be beat i mean definitely go for it if you're a dreamcast fanboy if the dreamcast is your favorite system definitely the way to go so yeah let me know what you think down below if uh you have the dreamcast mod if you're happy with it or if you think it's worth getting or if you think uh one of the low-cost alternatives is the better idea to go with uh let me know what you think and i'll see you guys in the next video Thank you for coming to my video. If you would like to help my channel grow, please like and subscribe. And please click on this little bell icon so you never miss a future video.